bitstream forensic images is easy with Paraben's forensic replicator. This video is just one of many videos in the free PG3 training video series from Paraben. This video is going to go over the interface and features of forensic replicator. So let's go ahead and open up forensic replicator here. It's important to keep in mind that as we run forensic replicator, we have to run it as administrator. If we don't run as administrator, even if you have administrator rights in your account, if you don't specifically run it as administrator, you may not be able to see all the images attached uh, to your system. So the basic interface of P2C is pretty simple. If we were to load in an image, we would be able to see the tree view of the image here, and we'll show you that after we create an image. Um, and I'll show you the details of the files as well. So under the file menu, we have the options to uh, create new empty floppy, floppy images, open existing image files, create a physical drive image. This is what you're going to use most of the time. Um, restore images on a physical drive. So if you need to restore um, an image to a physical drive, you can. You can convert it to a different format. Duplicate physical drive. You can erase all data of a physical drive. This is for your cleaning your media. If you need to do a DOD standard wipe, you can do that. Or you can even do just a single one pass wipe of all zeros. You can calculate the checksum of physical drives or of images of physical drives. And of course, you can close, save, save as, or save as HTML, um, open to image files. You can print or configure your printer. The batch, exp uh, batch assistant is generally used for um, floppy disks. I haven't seen floppy disks in years, so we won't really cover that. Um, you can create a self-extracting file as well. And you can view any of the recently created or opened image files. Under the image uh, menu here, we have a select. So if I have a, an image file loaded, I could select data, extract it, uh, view the file properties, or view the image information. Under disk, we see the disks that are attached to my system. We can create a CD-ROM or ISO image. CD-ROM ISO image. Uh, we can read a disk, um, or we can compare it or write the disks. Under options, um, we can sort by different types of data. We can show it in the class, li classic list box, or we can do it by icons. Um, we can change the font and the settings, or we can show the different um, toolbars here. So let's look a little bit at some of the settings. Um, we'll start with the disk settings. For disk settings, we can uh, ignore empty tracks when reading if we want to, ignore empty tracks when writing. Uh, I prefer not to do that because um, for forensic images, we want a full bitstream, and this will not be complete full bitstreams. You can verify your writing, um, and you can use only standard format here. We can also search for uh, Linux partition when we're starting. For the images here, we have uh, several different for or options here. Um, you can read through those and see if any of these things would like to do that. When you're compressing the images, you can choose your compression rate. Uh, for extraction, you can change your default extracting uh, locations so if you're extracting files from images. Again, I don't usually use uh, PFR for viewing image data, so I don't uh, use any of these options here. But I do use this for write blocking. When I do have a write blocker attack, attached, I want to make sure that I've got this selected. Um, I also attach, or want to make sure that I've got the USB write protection option selected if I'm going to image a USB drive uh, for forensic imaging, and then I remove the USB write protection when exiting Replicator. I am not using a write blocker so uh, in this demo, so I'll deselect that, but I am doing a uh, uh, USB um, image, so we'll keep those checked. I can have a notification um, when we're working with floppies and the batch assistant, but again, I don't work with floppies uh, ever, so I'm not going to mess with that. And then we have some general settings here that we can, we can also change. So to create an image, we can click here. We can either come up here and say new floppy image, or I'm sorry, create a physical drive image, or we can just click on the icon. Um, here we see the different images that are on, or sorry, different drives that are connected to my system here. It includes all physical drives, including uh, my system hard drive. I don't want to select that. Um, and a couple of different USB drives that are attached. I'm going to select the one that I want to image. I'm going to leave these checked for stop on disk reading error 
and generate acquisition report because I do want a report generated. I'm going to choose where to save this. And now let's talk a little bit about the different formats. We have a standard PFR format, which is a proprietary format for Forensic Replicator that is really just a raw image that is wrapped in a wrapper that compresses it and encrypts the file and also allows you to store it in several chunks. Now this is something that you can use if you want to uh, protect your images or compress them. However, keep in mind that when you're loading into P2C, you must load in um, in raw format. So you can create images uh, in PFR format with the uh, different options here, but before loading into uh, P2C, you'll need to convert it into just a raw format. Now when we save it in raw format, it will still put a .pfr extension on your image file, uh, but that's just for the easy uh, use within Windows. We can also save it in fixed uh, or dynamically expanding virtual hard drive image formats. Um, but we're going to keep it in raw here. For our text report, or for our report options, we have text file options, HTML file, or XML reporting. We can choose any of those, and we can choose what information we want. Image information, time and date of acquisition, export partition structure, and uh, add a file header, or I mean a report header. The report header is going to be the information here for the case number, um, agency examiner, and things like that if you would like to put that in there. When you finish that, it's going to ask you where to save the report. I'm going to save it in the same location. And our image is being created. Um, so it's not going to take long to create that image. Let's go ahead and uh, wait for that for just one moment, and then I'll load that image into uh, PFR here so you can see what it looks like with a loaded image. You can see that it calculates the different checksums, MD5 and SHA-1. Um, so this is your summary. So let's dump that uh, image in here and we see in the root directory we have a bunch of mp3s and we have a folder with mp3s. Now as soon as we have this in here we have a, more buttons come alive up here. So here we can save out this image file if we'd like to in a different format or uh, save a copy of it. Um, here let's see we have the ability to extract information from the image. Um, so this is that default location that was in your settings. I can ignore folders or I can extract them in the same folder or with the exact uh, path names as well. I can uh, extract certain types of files with certain types of uh, file selections or file extensions. Here we have different um, options for sorting. If I want to sort by different names or size or type. This is for floppy information, so we don't want to use that. Again, uh, it has full floppy support, but I haven't used it ever for floppies. And that pretty much uh, sums up the, the different options that we have for um, Forensic Replicator, for creating forensic images in different formats, um, and viewing data of, of images as well. If you have any questions, you feel free to email me at rob at and I'd be happy to answer your questions. This concludes this segment of the P2C training.